Now at 10 and streaming on CrossroadsToday.com, a Victoria man is in custody on forges. Palestine's request to become a member of the UN was vetoed today by the U.S. And we hear from the experts at Midco's Hurricane and Disaster Conference on this year's hurricane season. We had a little bit more sunshine today that actually popped a few showers out to the east of us and to the west of us. What about tomorrow and what about that rain on Saturday? All that coming up in just a moment. And Victoria East trying to do something they haven't done in a decade and that's make the playoffs. I'll have that in sports. If you're watching 25 News now at 10. This is breaking news from 25 News Now. ABC reporting the Israeli military launched missile strikes against Iran. A senior U.S. military official says there are also reported explosions in Iraq and Syria. These strikes appear to be the promised response Israel vowed to carry out after an Iranian attack on Sunday. The extent of Israel's strikes are unclear and we're following the story as it develops. More coming on our website, CrossroadsToday.com. Back in the crossroads, a former Calhoun County Sheriff died last weekend. George Aleman retired as Calhoun County Sheriff in 2016. That ended his 41-year law enforcement career. Aleman also worked for the Port Lavaca and Point Comfort Police Departments. In the early 80s, he rose through the ranks to become a lieutenant in the Wharton Police Department. George Aleman was 71 years old. DPS arrested a Victoria suspect Thursday. 38-year-old Bradley Hernandez faces four charges, including manufacture and delivery of a controlled substance, evading arrest with previous convictions, and tampering with evidence with intent to impair. He is in the Victoria County Jail in lieu of $81,000 bond. Around 12.42 p.m., more than 3,000 AEP Texas customers lost power. AEP Texas tells us an 18-wheeler pulled down some power lines. Mm -hmm. The resulting outage affected 3,300 customers. As of 8.25 p.m., no AEP Texas customers in Victoria County were still without power. At one point, all stoplights were out from Ben Jordan Street to Larry Lane. So here is your beer pull tonight. As always, you can scan that QR code that's going to come up on your screen momentarily. The question is, were you affected by today's power outage? Yes or no? According to our results, it looks like 23% standard at yes and the remaining 77 percent stand at no. Thank you for voting. Come to crossroadstoday.com slash vote to take part. And early voting for the May 4th election starts next Monday, April 22nd. Early voting will be at the Dr. Patty Dotson Public Health Center, 2805 North Navarro, Classroom A. Early voting hours for the first week are from Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Let's take a first look at your forecast with First Warren Storm Team Chief Meteorologist Mac Pettis. Mac today was in Cuero talking weather. How'd that go? Went well. I had a chance to speak to the uh, Rotary Club in Cuero and talk about uh, hurricane season. Uh, they were, you know, aghast at hearing that we we're expecting over 20 named storms, but that's what the forecast is. And we'll certainly have a lot more for it because right now we're preparing our big special report on storm prep 2024. Today we popped a couple of thunder showers out to the west. Tomorrow we're going to see enough sun to get us up into the upper 80s again. But then there's a little rain chance on Saturday night and we'll have more details on that coming up in just a moment. Mac, thank you. Texas House Republicans are split over whether to send aid to Ukraine. The Texas Tribune reports members of the House Freedom Caucus, including U.S. Representative District 27 Michael Cloud, have stalled Ukraine aid for months. They are demanding that Congress pass a bill securing the southern border before considering the foreign aid package. The Freedom Caucus is urging Republicans to reject the rule that would allow the foreign aid legislation to get a floor vote. Uvalde Consolidated ISD opened its newly renovated weight room. This was made possible by the Iron Sharpens Iron Initiative. It's a project aimed at providing cutting-edge athletic facilities for students across Texas. The initiative is dedicated to enhancing athletic programs by providing high-quality weight rooms designed to serve all students and athletes. The United States vetoed a widely backed United Nations resolution that would have paved the way for full United Nations membership for the state of Palestine. The vote in the 15 member Security Council was 12 in favor. The United States opposed. The resolution voted this afternoon would have raised the Palestinian status from a non-member observer state to a full membership. 
It remains our view that the most expeditious path toward statehood uh, for the Palestinian people is through direct negotiations between Israel and the Palestinian Authority with the support of the United States and other partners who share this goal. This is the second Palestinian attempt for full membership, and it comes as the war in Gaza has put the more than 75-year-old Israeli-Palestinian conflict at the center stage. Multiple protesters gathered on the campus of Columbia University today in New York to protest the war in Gaza. The president of the university called on the New York Police Department to clear the groups. NYPD made several arrests today and school administrators said those taking part in the protests were suspended. All of this taking place a day after school leaders testified before Congress, defending the university's response to anti-Semitism. At the same time, pro-Palestine supporters continue to rally right outside of the gates of Columbia University. And we have a follow-up to Monday's pro-Palestinian demonstration that blocked traffic across California's Bay Area. More than 30 people were arrested for the shutdowns of the Golden Gate Bridge and parts of Interstate 880 in Oakland. Those arrested in the Golden Gate Bridge protests were released, but they now may face felony charges. 26 Gaza war protesters were arrested for their alleged involvement in Monday's shutdown of the Golden Gate Bridge. As of Wednesday, all were released. But that does not mean we are not going to pursue charges. San Francisco District Attorney Brooke Jenkins says there's a tight time frame to make a charging decision when a suspect is booked on a felony. So all 26 were released pending further investigation. Potential charges include unlawful assembly, false imprisonment, and conspiracy to commit a crime, a possible felony. That requires us to have specific evidence related to each one of the 26 people. Um, we need video evidence, we need statements um, from uh, people impacted by the protest who were witnesses to what occurred. The DA is asking for those stuck in traffic to come forward to help with the investigation, adding they may be entitled to restitution. Rachel Shapiro McKim says she's considering it. She was in traffic for almost four and a half hours, headed to San Francisco for medical treatment. My bigger concern is for people with more life-threatening injuries or doctors I was standing next to waiting to cross the bridge who weren't in the hospital to see their patients. In the East Bay, Alameda County District Attorney Pamela Price is investigating protesters who shut down 880 in Oakland. In a statement to ABC7 News, she writes, Our prosecutors are standing by and prepared to receive case information for individuals arrested during that incident. While my office supports the essential right to protest, it's important to note that public safety should never be compromised. The group A15, one of the protest organizers, say the goal of Monday's demonstration was to target the global economy. They write, without the billions of dollars in military aid provided to Israel by the United States government, the massacre of over 30,000 people in Gaza would not have been made possible. The Arab Resource and Organizing Center, which has organized Gaza-related protests over the past few months, was not involved in Monday's action. But in a statement to ABC7 News, they called the claims to be absurd, ridiculous, and distracting. Executive Director Lara Kaswani writes, Jenkins' criminalization of dissent runs disturbingly parallel to the calls for violence against protesters being made by the far right. DA Jenkins has one year to file misdemeanor charges, two years for a felony. In San Francisco, on San Hassan, ABC7 News. In our area, the Victoria Emergency Management Office hosted the Midcoast Hurricane and Disaster Conference today at the Community Center. Participants heard from emergency management leaders, meteorologists, and other experts who deal with hurricane preparedness. The water that's associated with these storms that kill the most people. So when there's an evacuation order for your area because of that water threat, please listen to it. The, eps the experts predict this year will see a very active season with more than 20 named storms predicted. That's both tropical storms and hurricanes combined. Hospitals in Texas and Idaho are required to stabilize anyone experiencing a medical emergency. But two lawsuits are questioning whether that includes performing an abortion despite state laws. You can read this Texas Tribune article on our website, CrossroadsToday.com. And remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Crossroads Today. Hit the like button and click the notification bell so you can see Crossroads Today on YouTube. The suspect in the Kansas City Chiefs victory parade shooting pleads not guilty. That's coming up on 25 News Now at 10. Also ahead, layoffs happening over at Tesla. Those numbers next.
A Maryland teenager was arrested Wednesday for threatening a mass shooting at a high school in Rockville. Police say 18-year-old Andre Yi, who goes by Alex, had written a 129-page manifesto describing a school shooting. Police say the teen also reportedly thought about targeting an elementary school. Authorities received a tip from someone who said they knew them from their time together at a psychiatric facility. This man is charged with the threat of mass violence and is being held without bond. One of the suspects in the Kansas City Super Bowl parade shooting was arraigned on murder charges. Lindell Mays pleaded not guilty to second degree felony murder at a hearing today. He also pleaded not guilty to three other charges tied to the incident. He and two other men are prosecuted in connection to the lone fatality of the shooting. Investigators believe the shooting started after Mays and others got into an altercation. At least 25 people, including nine children, were shot. If convicted, Mays could spend up to 30 years to life in prison. Calls to 911 went unanswered during outages in at least four states overnight. Multiple police forces reported their emergency lines were down. Today, emergency call system service provider Lumen says the overnight 911 outage that left callers in the dark was caused by a light pole installation. A spokesperson tells ABC News it took roughly two and a half hours to restore services. Multiple law enforcement agencies across four states reported their emergency phone lines, both cell and landlines, were impacted, affecting the entire state of South Dakota, a county in Nebraska, and two departments in Nevada, including Las Vegas. People in nearby Henderson were told text to 911 was still functional and that those who call 911 will get a call right back. South Dakota officials say they also had to pivot, adding their emergency line received 112 calls during the outage, which is typical. We pivoted 911 calls to remaining phone lines. Metro Communications staff's expertise and ability to shift calls to our admin line and the availability of 911 texting provided the same dispatch services our first responders receive on any other day. A police department in Del Rio, Texas also reported a 911 outage overnight. It's unclear if the cause of that is connected. Christian Cordero, ABC News, Washington. The Tesla plant in Buffalo, New York is laying off 285 workers after the company announced 10 to 20 percent of its entire workforce would be laid off. Tesla filed a notice with the state of New York on Wednesday announcing the layoffs. The Buffalo Gigafactory had the most layoffs that have been announced so far. State lawmakers there are keeping an eye on the layoffs because Tesla could face financial penalties if they don't maintain a certain amount of workers at the Buffalo facility. If they do come below those numbers, we are going to aggressively push for them to, to pay the penalties that they agreed to. You know, I can't emphasize enough the great hopes that we had uh, for this company. Uh, but by and large, they've been a very comp difficult company to work with. Uh, you know, they're committed to paying the lowest, lowest wages uh, as possible. And they've never really shouldered the obligation of having a massive uh, public I investment. In the company's 2023 annual report to the state of New York, Tesla reported 1,808 jobs at the Buffalo plant. The state requirement is 1,460. We've all heard about the benefits of drinking less, better sleep, less weight gain, and avoiding that dreaded hangover. Mm -hmm, but limiting your alcohol intake can also decrease your risk of death from certain cancers. Every year in America, the American Journal of Preventative Medicine estimates around 20,000 people lose their lives to cancers that are related to excessive alcohol use, like liver, throat, and mouth cancer. Alcohol use also increases the risk of breast cancer in women. This is because of the substance made when our bodies digest alcohol, a chemical called acetaldehyde. This chemical causes DNA damage that inhibits our bodies from repairing that damage that can then lead to cells growing out of control and creating cancerous tumors. But it's not all bad news. A new study by the CDC revealed that about 80% of alcohol-related cancer deaths could be prevented if Americans would keep their alcohol intake at or below the recommended levels. That's two drinks or less a day for men and one drink or less per day for women. As the saying goes, all things are best in moderation. So here's one more reason to moderate your alcohol intake and surround yourself with environments and people who support that too. With this Medical Minute, I'm Perry Russum, ABC News. 
Dubai's airport is congested as schools remain closed nationwide. This follows flooding that brought parts of the United Arab Emirates to a standstill. Large pools of water could still be seen. Residents in several neighborhoods remain holed up at home. The heaviest recorded rainfall in the country's history happened just two days ago. Yes, they got about six to eight inches of rain in one day, which is what they usually get the whole year, and that was in the United Arab Emirates. Tonight for us, we're at 74 degrees, a fairly quiet evening. We got up to 87 today because the sun poked its head out, finally. We'll have a lot more sun tomorrow, but then the question is, are we really going to get that rain on Saturday? I'll have all that coming up in just a moment. Well, good evening, everybody. With a little bit more sun today, we started warming up those temperatures again, and the instability caused by that heating actually triggered a couple of showers. Uh, they, generally, they were out here along uh, the Matagorda Bay, Matagorda County area, and some up in the hill country. Let me zoom out and show you what's going on across the country. A little bit of winter still left up here, but that's, you know, pretty much uh, way up there, a long way from our area. Stormy weather through the Midwest, and of course, in Texas, we're watching for that frontal system that will, is already here, but hasn't started moving to really trigger the activity. This is not uh, what I'm talking about. The little showers just came right off the coast and uh, moved away. And then, of course, later this afternoon, we had big storms up uh, in, just above the hill country. As you see right there, there's Kerrville, um, big storms. But the good news is that they collapse once the sun goes down. Uh, because they're driven by the afternoon heating. So here's where they may have some more severe weather again tomorrow, but that's up there. When does it get here? And that's Saturday, and we'll talk more about that in a moment. 86 tomorrow, 84 on Saturday with the frontal system arriving, and then look at that, Sunday, 73. Sounds pretty good. There's the front, and this is the classic example of how you draw 
a front. You take all the observations across the state, and then you draw a little line between the temp where the temperature drops. So you go from here, and the squiggly line over here, and, squiggly, and then and there you have your frontal system. So there's northerly wind, cooler weather up there. It's hot and it's humid down here, and tomorrow we'll definitely be in the 80s. If we get more sun, we'll be in the 90s as our areas out to the west. So Future Tracker shows you the activity that was out there today. That is collapsing, no longer a problem. We are, of course, looking for what's happening across the country over the next couple of days because we're going to be looking for our uh, area here. Now, oops, went too far. Let me go this way. Yes, here's our front, as you can see right about there. Uh, it is going to be passing through here on Saturday. And as it passes through, that's when we get a pretty good chance for rain. Most of it's Saturday night. Sunday morning, it does move out of here and it clears up. And that will make uh, your Sunday fairly nice. I think your Sunday will be okay. Morning clouds, afternoon sun, up to about 82 tomorrow along the coast. Morning clouds, afternoon sun, inland areas of Cuero getting up to about 80, 82. We are looking at temperatures uh, to be rather warm tomorrow with a little bit of sun. And then Saturday is not a whole waste of a day. I think the morning will be overcast, cloudy, um, and uh, we'll have a southerly wind early. The front probably is not going to get until about 9 o'clock at night. So all of the rain will occur about sundown, maybe 6 p.m. till about um, 6 a.m. the next morning. So it'll be a, a couple of hours, maybe six to eight hours. And then by the time we get to Sunday morning, the northerly wind will kick in. That's why we're thinking that our temperatures will knock down to 73 on Sunday, and that's pretty good. Two days of fairly nice 70 degree weather. And then, yep, we get back into the 80s as uh, we're going to be turning the corner on summertime very soon. That's your seven day forecast. You're reminding everybody we do have a QR code. Love for you to scan that. Put Crossroads today on your phone. Here's Zach Brown with sports. Thank you, Mac. Victoria East making a playoff bid at the sports complex, and we had a signing at Edna High School. I'll have all that in sports.
Victoria East makes a playoff bid at the sports complex, and we also had a signing at Edna High School. But first up for Victoria East to welcome Gregory Portland to town in the North Zone with a playoff spot on the line. Now in the sixth inning, East led 4-1. to one. Gregory Portland got a runner on base, but then Victoria East able to roll a 6-3 to three inning ending double play to end any possibility of a threat. And now coming to the plate, Looking for a bit of insurance. Tatiana Rocha laces one in the center field with a leadoff single. She's going to work her way all the way to third on two wild pitches. And Anaya Franklin does a good job of just sending one in the right field. It's deep enough for Tatiana Rocha to tag and score to extend the lead. It's now 5-1 to one in the sixth. Victoria East in the final inning. Flashing a bit of leather. Right fielder Emma Luna makes a spectacular catch for the second out. Now Gregory Portland would start a two out rally. Victoria East hangs on, gets the five to two win. They are headed to the postseason for the first time in 10 years. We expected this all along. Uh, we didn't always put ourselves in a great position to do it uh, and we obviously had to do a little extra work to get there. Uh, but I mean with this class, with the talent that they have and the work they put in, we knew it was the expectation all along. And Victoria East softball hasn't had a ton of success really, uh, not the success that we've expected. Um, I mean, so getting to the playoffs is one thing, but to be able to say that uh, you're district champs and really get to control your destiny that first round would be huge. And that district championship she's talking about will be Monday at Cabinets Field in Corpus Christi against Veterans Memorial. We had a signing this morning in Edna. It was a key piece of that basketball program, and that is Kashia Robinson, who has signed to play at Arlington Baptist. The star point guard could do it all for Edna and was named the district's offensive MVP for the Cowgirls. According to Max Prep, she averaged 10 points a game. Four and a half assists and 9.6 boards in my time seeing the star point guard in action. She definitely stuffs the stat sheet across the board and did a lot of dirty work that helped propel Edna a few rounds deep into the postseason. Congrats to Kashaya on committing to play at the next level. Day two of the regional golf tournament this morning at the club of Colony Creek and the results are in and the athletes who performed the best from our area schools was Brent Passmore of Calhoun who finishes 47th overall coming in at plus 61 on the two days. Her fellow Sandy Trinity Morgan is tied at 53 shooting a plus 67 and Jillian Tanner right behind her at plus 68. We also had Quero's Addie Chilek finishing 64th shooting a plus 74. So we just talked about Victoria East postseason berth, but another team that had quite the turnaround, the Goliad Tigerettes, who just went undefeated in district play and taking home the district championship. Last week, head coach Jody Price says she's a firm believer and you reap what you sow and that the girls were beginning to see their hard work turn into success. A district championship after having a losing district last year is quite the turnaround. That is it for your sports. Donna Karina, back to you. Thanks, Zach, and stay with us. Coming up on 25 News Now at 10, we're going to take a last look at your weather. Plus, tomorrow is National Clean Out Your Medicine Cabinet Day. Not so fun, but we have that story next.
surveillance video from a Pennsylvania Taco Bell shows the moment a manager saved a baby. In this oh. video from Saturday, you can see a mother in the drive through with her baby who had stopped breathing. That's when the Taco Bell manager stepped in, helping the mother to perform CPR on her baby. She knew what to do because her daughter had a similar experience when she was little. While many in the area are calling her a hero, the manager says she was just in the right place to help out a fellow mom. Mm. Some lucky dogs wow. in Las Vegas got to take part in story time. A group of Nevada SPCA rescue dogs were brought to an elementary school on Tuesday where students read them books. The dogs were also able to get some human contact and attention from the children. Organizers say these events can help the students increase their self-esteem while boosting their speaking skills. This dog reading day was part of a promotion for Adopt a Shelter Pet Day. You know, that's Aww. a really good idea. It really you know, is. the reading for the young people and got the dogs on there, too. Get the dogs too. out there, yeah. yeah. The dogs were enjoying the stories, too. You could see, you, right? see, you know, they do that a lot. It's called Foster Fails, where you bring a dog around people and they want to take it home. That's what happened to me and my dog, Linda wow. from Quero, let me keep it for two days knowing I wasn't going to bring it back. <laughs> that's, that's what she was right. She was. <laughs> You're always right about the weather. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, tomorrow we'll see a little bit more sun. We'll get up into the upper 80, so it's going to be warm and humid. Uh, Saturday, most of your day will be okay, but by sundown, the clouds will get thick, and we expect rain as that little front will come through. Uh, most of the rain will be Saturday night. I'm looking maybe a tenth to a quarter of an inch, and then by Sunday, it's all gone, so that'll be good. All righty, thank you, Mac. And now is the time to rid your cabinets of unused prescriptions and expired medications. Friday, April 19 is National Clean Out Your Medicine Cabinet Day. Dispose RX, which makes at-home drug disposal solution, founded the day back in 2019. While some medicines don't necessarily expire, their potency can actually change over time. Many pharmacies offer free drop-off and disposal for expired medications. So be careful out there. You don't want to take a expired Tylenol or not a good idea. Pepto-Bismol, no. you never know these days. <laughs> well, thank you for joining us for 25 News Now at 10. Join Carolina Astroe, meteorologist Parker Cox, 25 News Now Sunrise, starting at 5 a.m. Good night, everybody.